So this patient is a 32-year-old woman who have had mediastinal adenopathy, enlargement of the lymph nodes, and she also has been having progressive shortness of breath. And in the course of the workup, of course, we're concerned about possibilities of bad things such as malignancies, which in a young woman, and even though she's a non-smoker, could be lymphoma. There are also other mediastinal tumors. But definitely high up in the differential, not just the fact that she's African American, but just a whole clinical feature mm -hmm. is that she may have sarcoidosis, a stage one sarcoid with mediastinal adenopathy. But we want to also look in the airways because very often we'll find mucosal thickening, and that will be another way to diagnose sarcoidosis. And finally, of course, we always want to rule out infection, and bronchoscopy is an effective way to do that as well. Now, in the course of uh, our bronchoscopy, the main goal is to sample those lymph nodes because they were the major pathology seen. And again, the most effective, least invasive way would be to approach it first by transbronchial needle aspiration, TBNA. If we come up here and look at the lymph node stations, we will see enlarged lymph nodes in the precarina. And as we go up to this next panel, I have already flipped the film to help me look to fit with the bronchoscopic view of the right hyla lymph node, the subcarina lymph node, and possibly even extending to the left hyla lymph nodes. So after the initial examination of the airways, we will then perform transbronchial needle aspiration of the lymph nodes, probable endobronchial biopsy of the airway, looking at the most abnormal segments, and perhaps also perform transbronchial biopsies. So this is a 21 gauge TBNA needle. We open up the package and it consists of both a syringe, which we shall use, and also the needle catheter device. We flatten this out, bring this out, hook the syringe on. Now we have ergonomically a fairly easy to pull out. and it's held in a single hand. To advance the needle, we push on the blue button forward and it automatically locks. I cannot pull this back. To pull back, I will have to depress the blue button, single hand motion, and pull back. We always check to make sure the tip of the needle is not exposed. This will damage the bronchoscope. And here is the tip of the needle catheter, and that's all we need to show. There are several techniques which I will show you. The first one we're going to approach is the lymph node in the right hilum, and I will not extend the needle. Elliot, let's go towards the right hilum. Here is the takeoff of the right upper lobe, and you can still suction if need be. And as you approach to the right hilum, don't flex so much, it's just right, about like so. Advance a little bit more, and now start turning in. Okay. Go down a little bit more. I want it to be in the right bronchus in the medius here. And as Elliot flexes up, I push my needle out so it's anchored into the mucosa. Now, Elliot, go forward. Don't let the catheter come out too far. Are you flexed? Okay, and advance on three together. Go ahead, you call it. And we see the needle going through. Now, it could be a little more 90 degrees, which we will do in the next time. And here I will be pushing the needle in and out of the mucosa. And you can see it coming in and out of the mucosa. So far no hemorrhage. And when you push the catheter far out enough, you see if you're in heme. So the first pass here, I will use the no suction technique, merely using capillary action. After about four or five pass, now I push the needle down, pulling it backwards and we will pull the whole catheter back. And Elliot will straighten out the bronchoscope. Let's take a look in the airway. A little bit of hemorrhage, you can suction clean. We'll take out side and do cytology. Okay. So again, not too much hemorrhage, So, but we will try to get out more. This is without suction.
Yes. I don't think I worked with you so far this week. But she was just... We will go back with a, a different needle. It's helpful to get a core biopsy, and hence we use a somewhat larger gauge needle catheter. This is a 19 gauge. But the rest of the setup is essentially identical. So this one we'll do a somewhat different approach. Come back even a touch more, Elliot. I will bring out the needle first. Very often I find this to actually be a little more challenging in an awake patient, but with the benefit of anesthesia, of course, there's very little movement. This is ideal. Now go up towards the precarina, 12 o'clock. Start flexing up. Now you really have to turn towards, come back a little bit. Now start flexing up. Flex up a little more. Yes, there, okay. And on three, maximally flexed. Flex. We'll go forward. Right. One, two, three. Advance. Now, suction. So, in fact, she coughed us into it. As you can tell, suction. Keep the airway clean. And again, I'm doing it without any suctioning. Sometimes when we do it without suctioning, I feel we can maybe get a better sample with less trauma. And now I'll break suction by pulling this back. Straighten out the bronchoscope, please. We always check to make sure the tip of the needle is not exposed. This will damage the bronchoscope. On three, come back and again straighten out your scope. Okay, and you can look at the site to make sure there's not too much hemorrhage. And that's a nice view of how it should look like after a TBNA, right? You have a little dart dot, but certainly no excessive trauma. The details of this particular case went pretty smoothly. We first used a 21 gauge needle, went into the right hilar lymph node, and the first pass actually showed not just some bronchial cells, almost always present, but also lymphocytes and some granuloma-like cells which would be pathognomonic of sarcoidosis, but also infection. Mm -hmm. So we made sure we saved some specimen and sent that off for infectious workup, primarily to look for fungal infections or mycobacterial infections. Traditionally, the gold standard would have been to perform a median stenoscopy, but that obviously is a more invasive procedure, requires general anesthesia, and again, you know, for ladies especially, it would require making a cut up towards the neck, and cosmetically it could be an issue. So overall, we just feel that TBNA, if it gives us an answer, is a much less invasive approach. Depending on the circumstance, but in the case of a benign condition such as sarcoidosis, where it does not make too much of a difference which lymph node we approach first, I would go to the largest lymph node, most easily accessible, and also one that I think would cause less complications. Now, on the other hand, if I'm concerned about a lung cancer, I would then approach the highest potential stage, which in this case would be the one most central in the precarina, so-called N2, and then go distally to the N1. In summary, overall, there are many different uses for transbronchial needle aspiration or endobronchial needle aspiration. I like using it because it provides a mechanism for, in the same bronchoscopic procedure, not only in going after the primary lung mass, which is often in the periphery, but of sampling central airway lymph nodes and providing a staging procedure all in one sitting.